We all know that ISO 14001 is the international standard for setting up and maintaining an environmental management system. But is it the only option? In this episode, I have four alternative options, which may be a better fit for you. Let's take a look. Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we look at the strategies and tactics to master environmental management and sustainability. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Andrew Marlow. In this episode, we will look at the main environmental management system standards, ISO 14001, 2015 and four alternative options and find out which one might be the best fit for your organisation. I thought it would be useful to cover ISO 14001 first within this episode to give a reference point to the four alternatives. The first standard is ISO 14001 2015 and one which many are familiar with. It's a hugely popular international standard, which was published in its first edition in 1996 by the International Organisation for Standardisation, ISO. Its key benefit is that it is applicable to any organisation, irrespective of their type and size, and it applies anywhere in the world. The international standard can be daunting at first, as it has many requirements that you will need to meet. However, its popularity means that it has been taken up by certification bodies globally and is supported by environmental auditors, consultancies and training organisations. In terms of its market penetration, an ISO survey based on data available at the end of December 2019 found that there are accredited ISO 14001 certificates covering 312,580 organisations across 487,950 sites worldwide. If you want the market-leading environmental management system standard, then ISO 14001 2015 is the one for you. If ISO 14001 2015 sounds too daunting for you, ISO 14005 could be the standard for you to base your environmental management system. Here again, the standard is developed by ISO. It is intended to provide a flexible approach to a phased implementation of ISO 14001 The phased approach means that it's ideally suited for small and medium-sized organisations, irrespective of their starting point, their needs or abilities to develop an environmental management system. Again, like ISO 14001, it can be used anywhere in the world and is applicable for any sector. Currently, there is no readily available data on how many organisations are using ISO 14005, but many may be using it as a medium or long-term development of their environmental management system, as it may be more suitable to their needs than ISO 14001. In a similar vein, BS 8555 2016 is also a phased approach to implementation of an environmental management system. It was developed by British Standards Institution, BSI, to meet the needs of small and medium-sized organisations and for a staged implementation towards an ISO 14001-based environmental management system. It should, however, be noted that this standard was withdrawn earlier in 2020, as ISO 14005, discussed earlier, was seen as its replacement, and under ISO and European standards obligations, BSI was required to withdraw BS 8555 and to cease any further development of this standard. However, 
there are many who find that BS 8555 provides good guidance for the phased implementation of an EMS. And it is still available from BSI, even though it will not be developed any further and will eventually fall outside of the best and developing environmental practice. It can be used globally and applies to any sector with its guidance being ideally suited for small and medium-sized organisations. In 2009, there were an estimated 300 organisations using BS8555 and being regularly inspected by an accredited inspection body to ensure that they still meet the requirements of this standard. Our next alternative environmental management system standard is more than a standard. It is a European Union regulation, and even more so, it's a voluntary regulation. This sounds like a contradiction of terms, but what is being said is that if an organisation wants to voluntarily use the EMAS regulation, they can make that choice, but once you start to use it, the regulations requirements apply to your environmental management system. Unlike any of the other standards in this episode, the EMAS regulation or the Eco Management and Audit Scheme to give it its full title was developed by the European Commission and approved by the European Parliament. It follows the requirements of ISO 14001-2015 for its general requirements and has additional requirements for environmental core indicators to adequately document environmental performance and also has requirements for employee involvement and environmental legal compliance. Although it's a European Union regulation, it can be used by any organisation or sector worldwide with the development of EMAS Global. Indeed, sector reference documents, SRDs, on best environmental management practice have been developed to provide guidance and inspiration to organisations in specific sectors, such as the retail trade and construction, on how to improve and further enhance their environmental performance. The latest data from April 2020 shows that 3,652 organisations have been registered to the EMAS regulation, covering 12,515 sites. It should be noted that the EMAS regulation involves appointed bodies in each EU member state for the accreditation or licensing of EMAS verifiers who undertake the role of auditing EMAS systems and registration for the successful organisations who meet the requirements of the EMAS regulation. The next EMS standard is RC 14001-2015, which was developed by the American Chemistry Council, ACC. It is an amalgam of their Responsible Care programme as well as the ISO 14001-2015 Environmental Management System standard. It includes the full ISO 14001 Management System standard and has been expanded to cover occupational health and safety. At the end of the third party audit, the organisation receives certificates for both ISO 14001 and RC 14001. It is applicable globally and whilst the initial impetus for RC 14001 was from within the chemical industry, it has found some traction in several non-chemical companies such as cement, mining, pharmaceuticals and paper mills. The current estimate for the take-up of RC 14001 is 90 companies across 350 facilities worldwide. So there you are, we've covered four alternatives to ISO 14001. I hope that this episode on the four alternatives has awakened your interest. So why not try them out 
in the development or enhancement of your environmental management system. Each of the EMS standards referenced in this episode can be readily obtained online with the ISO and BSI standards available from their respective websites. RC 14001 is available for $140 before taxes from the American Chemical Council. And the EMAS regulation is available for a free download from the Environmental Commission website. If you want further information on the standards referenced in this episode, this information is given in the description box below, including a link to the resources on the emsmastery.com website. I hope that this episode has given you an insight into the four main alternatives to ISO 14001-2015 and the factors that you should consider before using them. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. Until then, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch other episodes by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right. And to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.